So welcome everybody. This is Keo's Corner. We have a great edition this afternoon. Uh, very excited uh, to discuss this topic. We have some wonderful guests. I have Dr. Cabral, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. And we have uh, Mr. Eric Chase, who is a teacher at uh, the Richardson Olmsted School. And uh, Laura Ayas, who's a science teacher at uh, Oliver Ames High School. And Maggie Halverson, who's a fifth grade student at Richardson Olmsted. And um, Cassidy Reedy, who is a 10th grade student at Oliver Ames. And Zach uh, Waluka, who's a junior at Oliver Ames. And I am uh, Dr. Andrew Keogh, the superintendent of schools. So um, this topic really came to me uh, one day when I was visiting the schools and um, somebody reminded me, you really need to check out what they um, refer to as this design class. And uh, I was intrigued by that. And so I made uh, uh, an appointment to visit, um, actually, uh, Ms. Ayas's class and, uh, and with Mr. Chase's students there at the same time. And what I found was this ex amazing experience. And so I really felt like this is something people at home just need to know about. Something that we do in the Easton Public Schools that I think is extraordinary. And that's what I'm interested in. What are we doing? A lot of schools teach math, a lot of schools teach science, but what are we doing that's extraordinary? That's really different and out of the box. And um, the class is actually the science team. So. Um, uh, I don't know who was involved with this first, if it was Eric, or I think it was you, Laura. Can you tell us how this thing began? Well, the science team class um, has been, um, been run for a long time, um, and we also uh, oversee the Science Olympiad that happens in the spring. Mm -hmm. But a couple of years ago, actually, Eric came to me and asked if we might do something extra for just the fifth grade classes. So maybe you want to talk about that. Yeah, um, we every year the fifth grade has to take a science MCAS, which is sort of unique in the elementary level for fifth grade. And there's always questions on it about, here's a bunch of supplies, build something with that and explain it. And we've discovered over the years that a lot of kids have trouble knowing what to do with certain supplies if they haven't ever had that experience before. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed how much the kids really enjoyed the Science Olympiad. And I thought, what if we could do something that's just for the fifth grade, take out the competition part of it, and have them um, do something extra around designing and redesigning um, a project. And so when I was speaking with Laura, and we got uh, three other fifth grade teachers to sort of brainstorm ideas. And we came up with that we thought doing some design activity and having the kids being able to redesign it would be the best um, experience. And we, the kids really like at Science Olympiad how the classroom teacher steps back and the high school students take over. And we mm -hmm. thought that would be a really great opportunity, not just for my fifth graders and the rest of the fifth graders to learn, but for the high school kids to have that experience of being the teachers instead of the students. So after we all talked, then um, uh, that was at the end of, that was in the spring at the end of one school year, and then in the fall, um, I worked with my science team class on coming up with the idea, the construction that we would do with the fifth grade. And then they needed to um, think of what supplies they would need they, they, all of the students in the class made their own prototype so that they would go through the whole process themselves. Um, they tested them and then they redesigned them um, so that they could do all of that and then be able to know how they could help the fifth grade with that. Mm -hmm. And then they put together the instructions and basically the whole program, we, we did that together. And that was last year, that was our pilot year mm -hmm. doing it. And so <clears throat> a great piece of this is that the kids from different grade levels, from mm -hmm. different schools, interact, mm -hmm. get to know each other, and actually problem solve together. 
Yeah. And so you said um, they do a prototype. Tell me more. Tell us more about prototypes. Like maybe the kids can tell us. Yeah, what, actually, what does that mean, a prototype? Um, Zach and Cassidy even brought. We did. Uh, we brought a couple of our prototypes mm -hmm. of the uh, mousetrap car that we make. Um, basically, what it is is it is a we make a car. We take a piece of cardboard and we attach wheels wheels to it using a wooden dowel. And we have options for wheels such as. CDs and white styrofoam discs. And we attach a ordinary just house mousetrap to it. With the mousetrap, we attach a pencil and a string. And the spring in the mousetrap, when wound up, when you wind up the wheel with the string, causes the wheels to move and the mousetrap to move forward. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So. So I asked Dr. Cabral to join us today because mm -hmm. she um, is the leader of really our STEAM or STEM. Sometimes you hear STEM. I actually think this is actually a STEAM activity because it really does involve almost an art, mm -hmm. A being for the art. Mm -hmm. but can you talk about how this kind of thinking fits into uh, our STEAM initiatives? Absolutely. And why, why does it matter? Why, I mean, some people might think, oh, so they built a little car. Yes, so what? How does that matter ultimately for people or for our society or for our future? Why, why is this a good exercise for kids? Good question. So uh, as you can see, there are lots of ancillary activities that the students are learning from this that you heard about in terms of the cooperation, working with different groups, working with different age groups, the recycling of materials. But the essence of the, the project is the fact that they're uh, involved in engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is something that STEM is science, technology, engineering, math. STEAM involves the arts, which is what we incorporate in Easton. We think it's very important. Uh, as most people will know from their own experience in school, you very rarely have an engineering course. You have science, you have math, you may have some technology. Um, but you don't have engineering. Frankly, we don't want engineering to be a class on its own in the lower grades because we want that thinking, that problem solving, attending to precision, um, failing and trying again. We want that to be part of all courses. We want to incorporate it into the way that, that, that our students are approaching problems in every area. So we just like technology. Um, there are some uh, uses for having a technology class, but it's better if students use how to apply technology to English in an English class and how to apply technology to science in a science class. And the same is true of engineering. So as you can imagine also, we don't have teachers who ha are engineers or have taught engineering in the past. And so projects like this where teachers work together and help one another and work with students to try to incorporate the math and the science and the problem solving and all of those components that come with engineering that are so beneficial to students in every other domain, including their, their daily lives, uh, we really want to take advantage of this. And it's embedded professional development for the teachers. It's clearly a wonderful activity for the students. Mm -hmm. um, this pro the, the attributes I mentioned before, the problem solving, mm -hmm. the attending to precision, not giving up, having patience, those are things that we need to incorporate more uh, in every area. And taking components from this, the more we talk about it, the more we share it with our colleagues, the more we can adopt some of these um, approaches uh, to our other classes as well. And the more the students will be comfortable with using them. So I think that, and perhaps our, our teachers here, Mr. Chase and Mrs. Zayas, could speak to, I've only, they've only been doing this for two years, but even talking about if they've seen a difference in the way that they s the students are approaching it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, um, and, and maybe um, how that development has, has come about. Have you noticed any of that with your students? Well, why don't you start, because you see the, the whole fifth grade from... Right. <coughs> Yeah, one thing I do notice uh, when, I, when I think of my own students, the high school students, um, it's a learning curve for them as well. It isn't just sure. the fifth graders that are learning as we do this. Um, the high school students are, first, they have to start with their prototype, so they have to figure out how to do it themselves and test it and design it and redesign. Um, but they're also learning how to guide the fifth graders. 
So they're learning how to be teachers and not do it for them, but not just sit back and, and you know, let them figure it out. It's, it's a balance. And so I do find that my students, when they work with the fifth grade classes at the beginning of the year, compared to working with them later in the year, there is definitely a difference in their approach, and they're learning how to guide them. Sometimes they guide them too much, sometimes they don't guide them enough, and even from class to class, from fifth grade class to fifth grade class, there's a different, even those students are different, and so my students are learning how to teach different kinds of kids uh, with different abilities. Um, and so they've had to learn how to fix the car Sometimes they'll encounter something when they're working with one of the, um, the students. They'll test the car and it's not working and the high school students don't know. That they're kind of baffled. I've never, I've never had it not work like this before. I've, it's worked or I've, I know what to do to fix it and they have to figure it out. Um, so Everything's it's, not predictable. It's not. <laughs> it, it isn't. And sometimes it's as simple as they have to wind the string differently. It was wound too tightly or it got caught. And sometimes they have to redesign the whole thing. And mm. it's, it's new to them. Mm. Have, have, have you experienced that, Maggie? Yes. I mean, where, where it's like, you guys got something that the older kids didn't? Um, mm -hmm. Well, the first time that we tried and tested it out, it didn't go that fast. It was pretty slow, mm -hmm. and it curved a lot. Uh -huh. um, Were you disappointed? Yeah, because yeah. everybody else's was going pretty fast, uh -huh. and and I didn't know what to do. But they were they pretty much knew what to do, and they but they didn't just tell us this is what we need to do. We're gonna do it now. They told us this is what you need to do. This is why it'll make it better, and. And so then they had us do it with them, and so it was nice because we learned something and it wasn't just them telling us what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And then it worked great. That's awesome. So, you know, one of my things as a person who's been in education now for 28 years, I think this is my 28th year, is that I think a lot more about kind of the old days and the ways we used to be taught in schools kind of before all the testing movement. And I think before the testing movement, there was a little more kind of flexibility in the classroom. Teachers felt like, I can teach this however I want. But frequently, they allowed us to create stuff. Mm -hmm. So they'd say, here's the parts, you make it. Mm -hmm. There is no example. Just come up with something. And we would have to build it from the ground up and it was amazing what people would come up with. Do you feel, um, Cassidy, that there's a, a kind of a creative element in this process? There's definitely a creative process in some of it because they also do make it their own. Like they all follow the same instructions to make them um, car, but they also can like, you, again, you can choose the wheels, you can choose the lever, you can choose like however you kind of want to design it. Mm -hmm. So like some of them will like, will just go better and mm -hmm. then others will um, not go at all but then mm -hmm. again we help them um, make sure it does go at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. I wonder um, Maggie if ever after class you find yourself thinking I wonder if I could have done such and such. Does that ever happen to yeah. you? Yeah. Really? <laughs> because afterwards I actually thought if we hadn't because afterwards after our second class where we had collaborated and found out how to make it different. Um, we could decorate it, and I put this big, like, pole thing on. And after I brought it home, I was like, I wonder if I hadn't put the pole on, and I just added more flat weight, it would have gone faster because the pole mm -hmm. had, like, s stopped, like, the wind sort of. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so oh, it was creating a resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, how cool. So this really gets to the essence. I'm going to look at the camera. This <laughs> gets to the essence of what we're really so excited about. Mm -hmm. For so long, we've kind of moved away from allowing you guys to do this experimentation, this free creative thinking, and have kind of done it for you by saying, just remember this stuff. And what we're finding through research is that 
the kids forget the stuff that we just mm -hmm. tell them to memorize. They remember it for the test and then they forget it. Mm -hmm. They don't go home and reflect on, wow, I wonder if I could have done that differently. Mm -hmm. So this is that kind of designed thinking that's a higher mm -hmm. level of thinking. And guess what? I am going to bet that you're not going to forget these activities. No. That it's going to stick with you, number one. And number two, there's a really good chance that you, or Cassidy, or Zach, but especially Cassidy or um, Maggie as women, young women, albeit, um, think about their career choices. You might actually say to yourself, I could be an engineer. From a, very, from a practical perspective, certainly we want the best for all our students to prepare them for college and career. Uh, college or career when they leave high school and we as educators take our lead from industry and business mm -hmm. um, and all of the feedback we've been getting is that we don't have a very large workforce coming in the next five mm -hmm. to fifteen years in the STEM areas especially as Dr. Keo mentioned young ladies mm -hmm. traditionally they have not gone into that area, into that field. And that's why many people in the community will hear a lot about STEM or STEAM lately. It is not because it is more important than the humanities. As a former English teacher, I can tell you that English and foreign languages and social studies are all very, very important. But what we're finding is that there's, uh, there is less content area knowledge in the younger grades. So we're working mm -hmm. on helping our teachers with professional development, offering these opportunities of hands-on learning, which is the best way to learn things like technology and engineering, mm -hmm. and providing those opportunities to transfer to other content areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's absolutely true, and there's actually been some good research about um, fields in STEM, like science or technology, engineering, mathematics, right in this region of the state mm -hmm. there's going to be a shortage. They've already done the uh, projections. There's going to be a shortage. These are really good quality high paying jobs and it can be fun. So um, I, that's why this was such an important topic I felt to talk about with the community because it's just another example of how we are really doing some great work here and want to continue doing some great work. And I think about like as kids, when we were all children, when we were just kids and our parents would say, go outside and find something to do. I don't know about you guys, but I was lucky enough to have a town forest behind me. And I can remember saying, well now what am I gonna do? And sitting there for about 10 minutes, but then coming up with some pretty imaginative, cool things to do like making lean-tos out in the woods. I did that. Have you done that? <laughs> See, and now that takes some creativity, doesn't it? Because you don't just put a pile of sticks and then crawl under. You put the strongest stick as your beam. Have you ever done that, Zach? Yeah, yes. many times. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I was saying this at a school committee meeting the other day, that when my daughter was in third grade, so she's now your age, she's a junior, but when she was in third grade, I said, I, she went to the same elementary school that I did. So said to her, oh, third grade, I love third grade, because that's when we used to go out on recess, and we used to, um, well, quite honestly, the girls used to chase the boys. <laughs> and she goes, oh, no, we can't do that. I said, how come? She said, oh, we're not allowed to run on the pavement because somebody fell down. I said, ah, uh, that stinks. I said, well, you must make those little lean-tos and little Native American villages on the side of the woods and make little little fireplaces and stuff like that. She said, no, we can't do that. I said, why not? She said, oh, the ticks. Oh, the ticks. Yeah. And I do kind of, I do kind of yeah. feel like sometimes we're sterilizing education and taking out those creative thinking opportunities. I see all three of you nodding. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So that's a concern to us. And that's why this is, I think, a, a really healthy uh, kind of learning experience that feels that same kind of fun. Would you agree with that, Zach? Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, most definitely. Because you, yeah. have, you have direction, but you can still <coughs> you have, have fun you with can it. Take, you can take, a, you have a direction, you have, I mean, you do have to end up with a mm -hmm. vehicle that moves, mm -hmm. but you can, I've had kids who have put one wheel here, I've had kids who put five wheels here. Has and anyone so ever done something to like deflect 
the uh, yeah, I, wind? Yeah, I actually had one kid who put a, um, we blew up a balloon and tied it to the side because the car was turning left, so we put it on the left side to keep it from turning. Clever. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other cool things like that that you've seen, Cassidy? Um, well, um, I've been doing this for two years now. I did this last year, too. And a lot of kids like to um, put like popsicle sticks on the front or on the mm -hmm. back because sometimes they will like break down and not go as fast. So they like to add some weight so it will just like kind of like stay like balanced and it'll go instead of like the pencil and the weight just kind of like breaking it because that's happened a lot to me. Oh, that's so cool. Problem solving. It yeah. is. It's, it's problem good. solving. So Critical there's thinking. a thing out in, uh, there's a, a, a a kind of thinking called uh, design thinking, which this really is. Basically, it um, stems from Stanford University. Have you ever heard of Stanford? Excellent, uh, Stanford, excellent school. Uh, and it's all about the same exact process that you guys are doing. You know, you think about an idea, you try it, it fails. You go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. So what have you been taught about failure? In if you forget about this class, what are the messages we type typically teach kids about failure through, you know, athletics and you like, or homework or grades? You can't learn if you don't fail. Right. Well, I hope you're hearing that. Yeah. I'm hoping you're hearing. You've learned that through this, haven't you? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's what we're looking for. Because unfortunately, you know, sometimes people think failure's a terrible thing keeps yeah. people from taking risks. And that's right, really right. what's so unique and wonderful about our country. That's where our greatest innovators and thinkers mm -hmm. and inventors come from, is willing to try something that doesn't seem like it might work at first, or not giving up on it when it doesn't. So those are really important qualities. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah. something we've tried to really emphasize with this program is a lot of times the students, the, the first they come twice, and the first time they come, they'll test by the end of the time, and a lot of times the car doesn't work at all. And we're really trying to encourage them, no, it doesn't mean that it failed. It doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you, you learned something and you can fix it now. And they come back a second time. And in between, we teach them a lot about collaboration, right? Yeah. We talk about that a lot. They collaborate with their partner. They collaborate with the high school students. And then they collaborate as a whole class, helping each other um, after they've been in our classroom, help e as a class, help to know how they could fix it and make it better. And then they come back and mm -hmm. they redesign it and mm -hmm. retest it. Mm -hmm. So they've so learned one way that it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. And then, and they, then they can learn another. other ways that do or don't work from other classmates so that they can come back and... Do they ever draw these things out? Yes. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times they come back with a diagram of how to fix it. So that's another... Mm -hmm. A. That's a. That's mm -hmm. the A in mm -hmm. STEAM. There's a, a, mm -hmm. a the piece a. of the art mm -hmm. where they're using their creative drawings to see, yeah. you know, maybe this would create less wind resistance if I did mm -hmm. this. I want to go back to something that Dr. Cabral just mentioned about um, the U.S. and the United States and kind of um, our position in the world. And I think, frankly, I think people feel a lot of pressure in the U.S. right now. Like, can we compete with everyone else? Mm. Because there's so much competition across the world with the spread of information. Do you think these kinds of learning experiences are important to us maintaining you know, the kind of creative edge? Do you, what do you think about that, Eric? I think it's very important. Um, the the hands-on aspect of this kind mm -hmm. of science is, is vital because that's how a lot of kids, especially kids at the level that I'm working with, gain the best understanding of the information that I'm trying to, to get across to them. If they can you know, hold a rock or touch a rock or mix chemicals together mm -hmm. and see the reaction or not just talk about building something but actually go through the process, it, that, that trial and error, that, that hands-on tactile experience is going to give mm -hmm. them um, a much better understanding of what it is they're they're trying to learn and coming back from this class even the kids whose cars you know you know they did the mouse trap and all the wheels fell off or whatever they all had a great time being there and and I didn't see anybody frustrated or down or 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 upset about that their car didn't work they just enjoyed being at the high school in this new environment 
working with uh, kids who were closer to their age than their classroom teachers and seeing how those different aged kids could be mentors and guides and they were so looking forward to going back for the second opportunity. And in the end, I mean, some kids' cars went halfway down the hallway, some kids' cars went, turned and crashed into the wall, but when I asked everybody in the class, and, and I, I'm confident if I asked any of the fifth grade teachers, would you recommend we continue doing this? 100% unanimous that it was one of their you know, favorite activities of the year so far, and it was something we definitely should continue doing. I'd like to ask Zach and Cassidy, I think I know what Maggie would say. Typically, um, our younger students tend to look at the high school students kind of like rock stars and really <laughs> love working with them. So I don't want to speak for you, Maggie, but I'm going to presume it was a great experience for you. What I'd like to hear is if uh, Zach and or Cassidy could share what it was like working with the fifth graders. You may, unless you have a younger sibling, you may not have that experience very often. And even if you do, not oh, in yeah. this type it's of situation. It so is definitely different. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about what that was like? Uh, like Mr. Chase was saying, with the um, like how they learned from us, I think we actually learned more from them. In a sense of, we learn how to work from. We learn how to work with them. We learn how to how their minds work. We learn how more points of view. They have a much more creative outlook than I think we do. Mm. Just whether it's age or whether it's grade, whether it's whatever it is, they definitely have a much more creative mindset when it comes to stuff like this. And there's definitely things that we, more things we can learn from them than I think the other way around. But mm. Cassidy? I feel like um, kids, they seem it, they look at things more like simple and like we like to look at it more like complex. So when I do this, and like something doesn't work, I'm like, oh, there has to be like a complex reason for it or something gotcha. like that. And then a kid will just be like, no, let's just put, like put new wheels on. And I'm like, no, that can't work. <laughs> it has to be something more. And they're like, no, it's just the wheels. And then we do the wheels, mm -hmm. and it turns out I was just yep. freaking out over now. Over complicating yeah, over things. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, Good. Yeah. so you know, there's a great program that that everybody should watch at home, and it's so easy to to um, find on YouTube. But you could just Google it. It's it's called the Marshmallow experiment or the mm. marshmallow project. I don't know if you're familiar oh. with that. I Have you heard of it? I think we did that. What? I think my teacher did that with us. And what did you, how did that go? A maybe? couple of years ago. Um, I don't know if this is the same thing, but we took like toothpicks and marshmallows and we like built stuff. Well, it's I, that's the idea. <laughs> that is the idea. So basically in this, um, this YouTube program, they, they talk about the marshmallow project. And so basically you get a certain number of pieces of um, uncooked spaghetti and a certain length of tape and a certain length of string and a marshmallow and the group that comes up with the tallest tower that supports the marshmallow at, at the highest level wins and so what they found was fascinating who do you think was the worst at it adults CEOs and executives, <laughs> i.e. <laughs> superintendents. <laughs> Not assistants. Either. And who do you think? And, oh, and assistant principals. Yeah. Superintendents were good, huh? Yeah. And so, and who do you think was the best at it? Young kids. Young kids. The kindergarten kids. Kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what Cassidy said. Mm -hmm. They, they aren't afraid to take the chances. We become programmed not to take a risk mm -hmm. because it might be embarrassing because we might not not be able to mm -hmm. get the right answer. But at this age, at Maggie's age, it's like, yeah, bring it. I'm going to make this thing work, and it's going to be <laughs> awesome. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to try again. And so this is really captured in all of this. So I just want to tell you how proud I am of all of you for making this possible for the children of Easton. And who knows, maybe others will watch and, and take this idea. That's the beauty of the passage of information. And um, thank uh, Dr. Cabral for supporting these kinds of initiatives and bringing um, STEAM activities to, uh, to um, Easton. And um, there are so many ways that we're getting involved with STEAM. It's just fantastic. Um, and I just, I'm, I can't say enough about it. And I just, and I can't stop talking, as you can see. <laughs> but it's mainly because we're, we're talking about learning at the highest possible levels.
I don't want you to memorize facts for true or false tests that you're going to forget by the end of the week. I want you to think creatively mm -hmm. to solve the big problems that we're facing. So I hope you will take what you've learned, look in the mirror and say, I can do these big problems. Because we have many big problems facing us as a society. And you've got to be willing to take chances, get beat up or fail, and get back up and try again. So this is awesome stuff. Do you want to add anything? That was wonderful. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you all very much. And I look forward to joining you for another class. And maybe we can uh, reconnect next year and see what, <laughs> see what kind of progress yeah. we've made. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having thank us. You. Thank you for having us. All right.